Good morning all. In this lecture, we will discuss about the fundamental steps involved in digital image processing. So let us begin this discussion. In university examination, you may get a question like explain the fundamental steps involved in digital image processing with suitable block diagram. So in order to answer this question, you have to draw this block diagram. Now this block diagram, it represents the various fundamental steps involved in digital image processing. So let us discuss all of these steps one by one. The first step of digital image processing, it is the problem domain. In problem domain, here you have to specify our target object. Our target object, it could be a 3D scene, it could be a planet, it could be a kidney stone. So depending upon our target object, in this step, here you have to choose the specified uh, instrument, the specified camera to capture our target object. The next step of digital image processing, it is the image acquisition. The objective of image acquisition, it is to obtain the digital image of an object. In real world, all objects are continuous in nature. So in order to represent those continuous objects in our digital system, in our digital computer, we have to convert them into digital format. And this process it is called as, and this process of converting and uh, real time object into its uh, digital image format, this conversion it is called as digitization. This digitization it involves two steps uh, called as sampling and quantization. So in order to understand digitization, let us take an example. So in this example, figure A represent a continuous image in two dimensional space. So in order to understand the digitization process in this continuous two dimensional image, we will consider a particular line segment AB. So in figure B, it represent the amplitude profile of this line AB. So in order to understand this amplitude profile of line AB, let me mark three intermediate points along this line AB. So let us assume this point it is my point x, this point it is my point y and this point it is my z. The corresponding x, y, z point on my amplitude profile this is point x, this is point y and this is the point z. Now first we will target the line segment AX. The line segment AX that is from A to X, the color of this line it is white. So in the amplitude profile you will find it has the line segment AX will have uh, the line segment AX has highest intensity value. Next line segment XY from X to Y we can observe the intensity. The brightness is increasing. And in the amplitude profile, we can see from X to Y, the intensity value, it is increasing. Next line segment from Y to Z. Next line segment, it is YZ. From Y to Z, the brightness decreases. And in the amplitude profile, we can see from Y to Z, the intensity value, it is decreases. Next line segment, it is ZB. From Z to B, the color of this line segment, again, it is white. So in the amplitude profile, we can see from Z to B, the intensity value, it is highest. Now, since this line, it is continuous in nature, so, or, or in other words, since this line, it is continuous in nature, it means it has the infinite resolution. However, our digital system, however, our digital computer has finite resolution. So in order to represent this line profile in our digital system, in order to represent this line profile in our digital computer, we have to convert this continuous line format into digital format. So first step of digitization, it is sampling. In sampling, we multiply, in sampling, we multiply this continuous line profile with this railing function. And after, uh, and after multiplication of 
this continuous line profile with this railing function we we get the sample at periodic interval of time all these blue dot in this figure c all these blue dot it represent the sample at the periodic interval of time now this sample value will have the amplitude in continuous uh, domain and since our computer it has the finite resolution so we have to represent their amplitude in terms of the quantized state and this step it is called as the quantization so in quantization for each of these blue dots for each of these blue samples we have to check its nearest quantization state for example for this uh, for this sample the nearest quantization state it is this one and in the output image you can see this blue dot it is mapped to this quantization level similarly the next sample point here also you we can see the next sample point it is again very very closer to this quantization state so in the uh, so in the uh, in this in this image d the second point it is also mapped with the same quantization state and the same process it is repeated for the other samples also and ultimately we obtain a digital version a digital representation of this continuous line profile so this process of digitization we have computed for a particular line segment ab similar process we have to repeat for the entire image segment and if you repeat the similar digitization process for the entire line segment we will get an output image like this so this was our input image which is in the continuous domain and this is our digital image output so in order to convert a continuous image into digital image we have performed two intermediate uh, steps one it is called as the sampling another one it is called as the quantization next step of image processing it is image enhancement and image filtering so from the name it is clear that in image enhancement we enhance the quality of the in, uh, quality of the input image for a better human perception for a better human interpretation in order to understand image enhancement let us take two examples in figure 1 my input image a it is very dark it may be due to the poor illumination of the light and since my input image is dark so in order to enhance my input image a i have performed the power law transformation and as a result i obtain an enhanced image output similarly in figure 2 in figure 2 my input image a the appearance of input image a it is inferior due to the improper illumination of light so in order to enhance my input image a i have performed the histogram equalization and i obtain an output image which is enhanced compared to that of my input image a next it is image filtering the aim of this step it is to remove the noise or sharpen the edges present in the digital input image in order to understand this steps let us take two examples both of these examples i have performed in matlab example 1 it is related to the removal of the noise in order to perform this uh, project first i read a input image in matlab and in order to make it noisy i have added salt and pepper noise in it now in order to remove the salt and pepper noise from this noisy image i have applied the median filter on this noisy image and as a result i obtain an output image which is free from the uh, salt and pepper noise example 2 it is related to the sharpening of the edges sharpening of the edges we usually perform in order to enhance the blur blur, blur edges in digital input image so again in order to perform this experiment in matlab i read a image in which my edges are blur in nature and in order to enhance the blur edges in this digital input image i have used the laplacian l4 operator and laplacian l8 operator and as a result i obtained the output image in which edges are clearly visible edges are clearly visible compared to the digital input image a 
Next step of digital image processing, it is image restoration. From the name it is clear, in image restoration, we restore the degraded image back to their original quality. So in order to understand the image restoration process, let us take an example. So this example, it is given in the book and in this example, a noisy image has been restored back to their original quality. So figure A, it represent the original image. Figure B, it is the noisy image and the noise type, it is the additive Gaussian noise. So in order to remove this additive Gaussian noise, once arithmetic mean filter and geometrical mean filter have been used, the output of arithmetic mean filter and geometrical mean filter are shown in figure C and figure D respectively. By looking at the output figure shown in figure C and figure D, clearly we can see, clearly we can say we have restored the noisy image B back to its original image quality A. The next step of digital image processing, it is color image processing. In color image processing, we use several color in order to extract our region of interest. So in order to understand the color image processing, let us take an example. So in this example, figure A, it is my original grayscale image of thyroid. However, in this original image, the gray level variation, it is not clearly visible. So in order to improve the human perception and human interpretation. On this grayscale image, color image processing has been performed and the corresponding output, it is shown in figure B. Uh, the variation in the gray levels can be clearly uh, visible with different colors. So in figure B, different colors, that is the red color, green color, yellow color, blue color, different color, it represent the variation in the gray level present in my original input image A. So by looking at the different color, we can easily predict what are the different uh, gray level variation and hence it improves our interpretation. So in color image processing, as per the curriculum, you have to learn two color model, RGB color model and CMY color model. So the classification of colors based on color of light the RGB color model that is the red component, green component and blue component these are considered as the primary colors and CMY that is the kind magenta and yellow these are considered as the secondary colors. So this, this color model RGB color model and CMY color model we will discuss in details in our upcoming lecture. Next step of digital image processing it is wavelet and other image transformation. Wavelets in digital image processing are generally used to represent an image in various degree of resolution. The next step of digital image processing it is the image compression. In image compression, we usually compress an image in order to reduce the storage size, in order to reduce the bandwidth required to transmit an image. So in order to understand the image compression, let us take some examples. So in this so this project work, I made it in MATLAB. In example 1, I have compressed a grayscale image and in example 2, I have compressed an RGB color image. In order to reduce the storage space as well as in order to reduce the bandwidth required to transmit these digital images. Next step of digital image processing, it is the morphological processing. In morphological processing, our objective is to extract various image components which are useful to describe the shape of an object. So to understand the morphological processing, let us take some examples. So in morphological processing, we perform operation like thinning of uh, thinning the object, thickening the object. Uh, we perform the operations like the extraction of internal boundary, the extraction of external boundary, heat or mist transformation and so on. Next 
Step of digital image processing, it is image segmentation. From the name, it is clear. In image segmentation, we segment the image. We partition the image into various constituent parts or an object. In image segmentation, we perform operation like detection of an isolated point, line, and edge present in the given digital input image. So this example, it is given in the book. And in this example, edge extraction has been performed on the digital input image shown in figure A. The next step of digital image processing, it is feature extraction. Feature extraction, it involves two intermediate steps. One it is called as feature detection. Another one is called as the feature description. In feature detection, our objective is to find a particular region or a boundary or an object present in the given digital input image. And in feature description, we assign some attribute to these detected features. In this curriculum, in order to perform the feature extraction, we will use the chain codes. So we will discuss chain codes in our upcoming lectures. The next step of digital image processing, it is the image pattern classification. In image pattern classification, we process the assign level to an object. And lastly, and lastly, in order to perform all these kinds of image processing operations such as image enhancement, image filtering, image restoration, color image processing, to perform all these kinds of image processing operation on given digital input image, we need image processing software, we need image processing system, and we have to write a piece of code, we have to maintain a library. Uh, so all these to perform all these kinds of operation that is uh, in order to write a piece of code in order to maintain a library we need a database which is known as the knowledge database so today i am going to stop here so if you have any doubt if you have any query you can write in the comment section or you can write email to me uh, till then happy learning have a good day and thank you all.